Welcome, and thank you for being here with us. Um, my name is Joseph Pleasant. I am the Community Services Division Manager uh, and one of the Public Information Officers. Um, our MC for this event is our other Public Information Officer, Ms. Kendra Loney, who uh, has been with the department for five years and is the ying to my yang, and the, my right hand, my left hand, and often my brain. So please join me in welcoming Kendra Loney. Good morning, everyone. And as Joseph said, we are so honored to be here with you all today. Um, our Commendation Award Ceremony is a big deal for all of you that are in the room. You know that. And we are just so happy to be here with you all in person this morning. So thank you all for taking the time to join us. Uh, it is our pleasure to be here to honor most of you and the families that are here today to honor you as well uh, for your time and commitment uh, with your loved one that is serving and has served our community. So thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we're gonna ask everyone to stand as we have the presentation of our colors. Now, if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to ask that our chaplain, Firefighter Simeon Williams, please come to provide our invocation. Okay, could you bow your heads, please? Dear Almighty, Creator God, we are from many walks of life, yet we are here now in unity. We ask your blessings today on this commendation and ceremony that we may sense anew our responsibility as firemen, auxiliary, and citizens in our homes and communities. We praise you for this great land of ours and for the heritage which has come to us through the efforts of those whom freedom, justice, and righteousness meant more than life itself. Give us inspiration to meet the needs of the future. We are grateful for the opportunity to honor all here today and those that we've lost. May your Holy Spirit abide and strengthen all of us today. Kindle within each of us a flame of selfless, unwavering devotion today. Help us to give our love and service not only to those who need rescue, but also to the poor, the suffering, for we are all worthy of your protection. It is unto your gracious protection and mercy that we commit ourselves, our families, and our community now and forevermore. We pray this in your holy and matchless name. Amen.
Thank you. You, you may all be seated. I would like to introduce and ask that Deputy Director Chief Jerry Tomlinson come to the stage for his remarks during this commendation ceremony. There's no greater opportunity than to recognize the hard work of the men and women who work within the Nashville Fire Department and for our partners in the public who help us make our efforts possible. Today, as we uh, take an opportunity to recognize those, we want to greatly remember the sacrifice that they make every day to protect the citizens and visitors of the city of Nashville. Thank you all for being here with us today. Thank you, Chief Tomlinson. Now we will have Deputy Director William Swan. Excuse me, Director Chief William Swan. I did not demote you, I promise. <laughs> I might be demoted after that. No, just <laughs> Director Chief William Swan will uh, come and have his remarks before the commendation ceremony. She's fired. <laughs> well, so good morning. Um, it's it's complete honor for me to be here. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I want to especially thank uh, our mayor, John Cooper, as well as any council members. If you would, any council members, I know I've seen Freddie O'Connor, but any other, please raise your hand. Thank you, Swope, and, and maybe some others. But listen, thank you guys. Uh, also, all the family members of our personnel, and a special uh, thank you to the Music City Center for hosting our accommodation ceremony. Uh, Charles Starks, thank you so much and your staff. Every day, our personnel come on shift not knowing what they will see, who they will encounter, or what situation they will be in. They stand be between the threshold, between life and death. But this is what we do because this is a calling. A simple and small word, thank you, is a great expression of gratitude of the work that they do for the community. I remember working in the field myself making so many different unique and horrific calls and with time and sometimes intentionally you forget about those particular calls or circumstances that you were in. However, months, years later, someone would come up to you and stop you and name the time, date, and place that you made a difference in their life. What you do matters. We meet people often on their worst day of their lives, and we do our best to turn that situation around. Sometimes at our very best, things still go wrong. Let's face it, that's the, the nature of the job that we do. But what an honor it is to be in a position to aid and assist our brothers and sisters in time of need. It is the public servant role that we play. And even when things does not turn out right, we still have the opportunity to show empathy and provide a service to people when things are not so well. We make a lasting impression upon people's lives. What you do matters. The accommodation and awards that we're going to present today present, um, represent those instances where personnel and our members went well beyond the call of duty. They took steps to make, the sit, to make a conscious decision to do a little bit more. In their mission to turn around a bad situ situation in most cases, 
they put their, set, their safety second to the mission. Today we pause and acknowledge and highlight those specific calls and those acts that has been done. But right now, let's not forget, in this beautiful community, the city that we love, right now, there are members making calls that matters. So let's give everyone in this great department a hand of applause. <laughs> this morning, we also are, are honoring our community partners who work with us at the National Fire Department and Office of Emergency Management to promote the positive works of our personnel. These community partners help us present ourselves at our very best. In helping us provide that Class A service to those that we're sworn to protect and serve. And let's face it, we would not be as great as we are without you, our community partners. I was very fearful of trying to, and, and these individuals be, will be definitely named, but when you look at the wide range of our partnerships that we have, people like Charles Starks and his crew who allowed us to not only come here at no charge, but provided a service for us, um, a refreshment services. Monique Odoms is here, I know from Parks, who always provide the service if our personnel or citizens that are displaced for fires, whatever, are always so gracious along with the Red Cross to allow us to use their facilities. Schools, um, I could go on for days, Dwayne Farrell and his crew. NDOT, Diane has a great working staff with Philip Jones and Rocky and so many others. Our mental health coalition, Butch Spiriton is here up front. My sidekick and, and, and close friend, uh, Chief Drake is here. Army National Guard, THP, Box 55. I mean, there's nobody in this place and everyone, even from all the entities that I've named where they have not touched and resource, uh, helped with their, their um, um, resources when we were on the scene for extended time. The Grand Hyatt, Opryland, the Chambers of Commerce in different areas. Everything from that to a couple of business owners from downtown came together and said, what can we do to help public safety? They took up a donation and, and purchased a brand new van for the Nashville Fire Department. So what makes a great workforce? All starting with, of course, 911, our partners there who help us in everything. But what makes a great workforce is a workforce made up of men and women that have a desire to be their best at all time, but also having the right resources. So I thank you guys for that. I wanna also acknowledge the Office of Emergency Management for the work that they do. It's compiled of a small office made up of about 14 full-time personnel who touch the city on every event everything they deal with it every time we're at the not just being at the EOC but on a constant basis they do such an outstanding job <laughs> and then our emergency support units is made up of volunteers who do not get paid for the work that they do but they have high specialized areas everything from our public dive teams to our canine to our urban search and rescue uh, swift water teams that we made, our cold patrols, heat patrols, we, we deal with the most vulnerable population uh, in, our, in our society. So many, from David to Mike Russell, I see that he's here. This is an incredible, incredible team. And then finally, I want to touch bases and say something about the family of engineer Malcolm Ayrton and Captain Mike Brooks for joining us. These two members of our National Fire Department lost their life in the line of duty. And we want to thank you so much for sharing your family with us. 
and what greater honor it is to give your life for those you love. Just outside the Music City Center, you'll, you'll see how busy Nashville is and having the personnel and the resources in place to make sure everyone is safe is a challenge that we face every day. And I'm so thankful for our leadership and my boss that understands that as a city, <coughs> we're only as strong as our public safety. In the coming year, with the mayor's proposed budget and waiting for approval of council, we will be hiring 31 fire personnel, 36 EMS, and 13 fire prevention that's going into fire marshal's office. Along with a few other things, but a budget adding up to be $13 million of improvements. This would not be possible without the support of our Metro Council members and the commitment of our own mayor, John Cooper. So if you would, please <laughs> help me welcome the Honorable John Cooper. And Mayor, before I get off, I just want to say to uh, the importance of uh, when I look over, I want to make sure Dr. Wright is, his team is going to be called up here, but the danger of mentioning individuals, this is what happens. But Dr. Wright, thank you so much for your team helping and assisting us and everything. So thank you. So if you would, the mayor of this great city, John Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. It's um, good morning. Thank you for that kind introduction, Chief Swan and Chief Tomlinson. And thank you for leading this effort. And I want to thank the entire commendation committee for their work leading up to this event. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank Charles Starks, members of the Metro Council, our partners in this great work. If we're going to be a city, we're going to be a great city. And thank you all for making that happen. Everybody here today, Chief Drake, our department heads, everybody that goes to work every day to make that happen, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, with the men and women of our fire department and our EMS, because you come to help when people need it the most. And you partner with the civilians and the community partners. And you're going to be here and hear a lot today about the incredible things that our first responders do and about the support that they receive from partners like Box 55. Now, you're going to hear stories of extraordinary bravery and dedication, and we want to celebrate each of those stories. You're going to hear stories about NFD personnel who have died in the line of duty. And before we turn to our heroes, I want to say this. You, the family and friends who are here present, you are first responders too. Because when your loved ones need help or support, they turn to you. And I am grateful to that, and I want to acknowledge that you are helping them get this hard work done for our city, and you are part of our Metro Nashville family, and thank you. We value it so much. And now, to the purpose of this event, to celebrate the men and women of the Metropolitan Nashville Fire Department since 1860, if I got the date right, the MS Division, the community partners who support them, to remember and honor those who laid down their lives to protect this community. We can ask for no greater sacrifice and this group responds. Now, it's a special occasion. Every day, National Fire and EMS put, them, put themselves in the line to serve this community and to save lives. And what for most of us would be an incredible, extraordinary occurrence, say, re responding to somebody having a heart attack. Well, that, that for you is just a daily occurrence. Thank you. Now, you make it routine 
this extraordinary heroism. Well, you just, you just make it routine. Just one more day at the office. Just one more day of service to our community, not knowing what challenge or danger you may face. So what you do cannot be overstated. We cannot thank you enough. You save lives, your arrival, your presence, how you conduct yourself for many people. That, that is what is they're going to remember and what is maybe the most awful day of their life. And thank you for getting people through that. So every day you do this city proud. And sometimes, like many of the stories that you're going to hear today, your response is truly heroic, daily heroism. And I want to recognize and thank you for what, what you do. And the ceremony isn't just about fire and EMS employees today. It's also, you know, let's celebrate the residents who are partnering with us, the community support, along with the families that make it all possible. And, and that I do want to recognize Box 55. Now, for 70 years, 70 years, Box 55 has brought refreshments and support to our personnel as they work to respond to crises throughout our community. You have had the Office of Emergency Management and MMPD also. But let's recognize Buck Dozier and thank you and thank Box 55 for their unstinting support and 70 years of service to our community. And then to everybody who's called 911, we know who's stepping up. You call 911 on one end and what you get is a consistent kind, rapid response that saves lives and transforms trauma into survival. And I want to recognize the Nashville Predators Foundation and Nashville Noticias for their strong partnership with fire and EMS and for everything they do to support the Blaze mentoring program. The scholarships you provided to MMPS students are life-changing investments in our students' future and also in Nashville's future. So on behalf of the entire city, let me say thank you. Your spirit of partnership is more important today than ever. And let's recognize several people who are not here today and to recognize their family members who are here. And those are the people who laid down their lives to protect our community. Engineer Malcolm Arrington, who passed away on September 1st, 2021. Captain Mike Brooks, who passed away on February 1st, 2022. Both men died in the line of duty. Their families are here today. We honor their sacrifice. We mourn their loss. We will never forget them. And to today's award recipients, thank you and congratulations. Your dedication and heroism are inspiring us all here, inspiring everyone in the city for our years ahead. To every first responder here today and to their residents and community partners and to families who support them, thank you. Nashville appreciates and honors you. You are what is making our city special. So we are one community. We're going to be a stronger, safer community because you were willing to make the commitment. Our city needs to support you, to back you, to thank you, and today to honor you. Because you're making the commitment and you're sticking to it, even under the most challenging circumstances. And so, finally, to the families of our award winners, a special thank you. You know, public service is hard. I think our chiefs would agree, um, Chief Swan and Chief Drake. Public service is hard. And you all are in the front end of public service. And you can't do it alone. It requires your own network of supporters and family members, both the community, but your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, your wives and husbands. I share your pride in their work. I want to honor that today. And you have my deepest gratitude, but thank you to the support system to our first responders. You are part of our treasuring the heroism that we are acknowledging today because it didn't it happened alone but it, it, it had your support and help and love with it too but so from a city that's determined to be a great city 
thank you very much. And then Chief Swan, uh, it's my honor. I uh, just, again, and to the recipients, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Swan. Thank you, Mayor Chief Cooper. Now we will begin the presentation of the commendations. And while we do that, uh, we would be remiss if we did not take a moment of silence for uh, those who were impacted by the tragedy in Uvalde, Texas. So if you will join me in a, a moment of silence. Thank you. So first, we're going to start with a Citizen Exemplary Performance. Citizen's Exemplary Performance Award is to be awarded to any citizen or citizens whose quick action, assistance, or thinking contributed to the end result of saving or securing the lives or property of our citizens. First up, we'll have members from TDOT, Hawk and Wingate, and John Troop. On December 18, 2021, Nashville Fire Department was dispatched to a rollover motor vehicle collision on I-65 to a patient that had been ejected and suffered a traumatic leg amputation. Arriving personnel described that the patient was several yards away from the vehicle while his legs were still inside the vehicle. TDOT personnel had made it to the scene first and had already applied a tourniquet to the patient. Our personnel felt that the tourniquet application saved this patient's life and the TDOT personnel who took the decisive action deserved our gratitude and recognition. Next, we have a Chief's Award. This is awarded to an individual who shows superior effort and achievement, which contributes greatly to the safety, appearance, supervision, administration, management, proficiency, or public relations of the fire department. Metro Nashville Parks Department, Superintendent of Maintenance of Parks, William Manuel, Director of Parks and Recreation, Monique Odom, Special Projects Manager of Parks, Stevan Nellums, and Superintendent of Community Centers, Darlene Mora. Our department is often faced with our department is often faced with helping many displaced people impacted by emergencies in our depart, in our community. This can include structure fires, flooding, loss of electricity, and the need to find temporary shelter until our community partners can implement their operations to help with community members. We often call upon the Metro Parks Department to help us by opening up community centers and other facilities with very little notice at all times of the day and night. We are appreciative of the strong partnership we have at the National Fire Department and the National Office of Emergency Management with the Metro Parks Department. We present this Chief's Award to our partners at Metro Parks in appreciation of their continued support. NDOT, formerly known as Public Works, Philip Jones. Philip Jones nominee for Chief Award for his ongoing tireless contribution to the Nashville Fire Department through supporting the men and women of the Nashville Fire Department with training and operational support. The Mental Health Cooperative, Michael Randolph. Michael Randolph is the Crisis Program Manager for the Mental Health Cooperative. He has been instrumental in assisting the National Fire Department EMS Division with initiatives revolving around EMS and mental health patients. He teaches his new hire classes along with EMS in service about mental illness and de-escalation techniques. Michael is always available for assistance or to answer questions. He is very knowledgeable about mental health and the EMS service. He is an EMS advocate and will be instrumental in moving forward with assisting us with programs to address EMS and psychiatric transport. Organization Appreciation Award. To be awarded to any citizen or organization in appreciation for assisting the National Fire Department in fulfillment of its mission, non-emergency actions, we will award the certificate. 
Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition, Mr. Willie Suggs and Ms. Lindsay Castana. Throughout the year, the Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition supports the Nashville Fire Department through grants that enables us to meet and exceed its mission, standard tools, and training. This year, we are honoring the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition and its executive board for their unwavering support of the Nashville Fire Department through grant-funded educational opportunities. Multiple Nashville Fire Department personnel have become trained in advanced hazmat life support with TOX medic designation. This training greatly improves the Nashville Fire Department's servant mission of being an all-hazard response agency that provides continuous all-hazard support to Nashville, Metro, and Davidson County. Metro Nashville Public Schools, Dwayne Farrell. Throughout the year, Dwayne Farrell provides essential assistance to Nashville Fire Department members, including command staff, academy staff, and recruits, and support services for general needs, specifically in that he facilitates transportation needs to and from training events and special operation functions. Without his services, the Nashville Fire Department would be limited in the number of personnel that could obtain transport for functions and events. Chiefs Award, Box 55, Chief Buck Dozier, and Box 55 Volunteers. The Box 55 organization is as much a part of the Nashville Fire Department family as our personnel. The dedicated volunteers response is 24-7, 365, and provides needed refreshments to rehab support our personnel on incident scenes. It is not just active incidents that Box 55 attends. We have trainings for both the Nashville Fire Department and the Office of Emergency Management where the volunteers are on hand to support our personnel. They always have a smile, kind words, and quick response for our personnel. This is an organization that means so much to our entire community and this year Box 55 turns 70 years old. The organization shows no signs of slowing down and in fact they continue to grow with our department for their continued support, dedication, and friendship to the personnel of the National Fire Department and the Office of Emergency Management, we present Box 55 with this special Chiefs Award to honor them and celebrate 70 years of dedicated service. Certificate of Appreciation Food Donation for their 2022 Regional Advanced Hazmat Life Support Tox Medic Course. Mark Sturgnall, Grand Hyatt, Todd Edwards from the Grand Hyatt, Thomas Petrillo uh, from Opryland, Greg Pizzo, Opryland, Kendall Lee, Grand Ole Opry, and Quinton Galbert, Grand Ole Opry. We recognize these community partners for their generous donation for meals for the Advanced Hazmat Life Support Course and Tox Medic Course held May 11th through 13th for first responders from the Nashville Fire and surrounding county agencies. Instruction for this course is made possible by physicians and pharmacists from the Nashville Poison Control Center. The training was sponsored and is paid for in a grant by, obtained by the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition. Chiefs Award, Transit Passenger Van Donation, Mr. Bill Miller from Icon Entertainment and Mr. Ryan Hibbert from Riot Hospitality. A van donated by Metro Business Persons intended for use by the Nashville Fire Department to facilitate day-to-day -day operations to serve the Nashville Davidson County communities is the purpose of this award. This special gift will be one of the great benefits in supporting the Nashville Fire Department's operational efforts by providing support to public safety response, thereby advancing the Nashville Fire Department's mission to an all-hazards response mindset. Community Service Organization Appreciation, the Bellevue, Madison, Donaldson Hermitage Chambers of Commerce. 
These chambers of commerce recognize employees from within the Nashville Fire Department each year that serve within their respective communities. The Nashville Fire Department greatly appreciates the annual efforts to report and re promote and recognize the Nashville Fire Department's contribution to their communities. This includes often highlighting Nashville Fire Department personnel for their work in their communities and providing extra care to our fire stations through meals, donations, and other gifts. Media Award to be presented to any member of the print or broadcast media who, while in the process of their assigned duties, reports, writes, airs, any articles or segments that reflect positively upon the Nashville Fire Department. Nashville Noticias, Ruby Rodriguez, Miguel Batista, and Veronica Salcida. Nashville Noticias is a Spanish language news organization that covers all of our ev events and bridges the gaps between Nashville Fire Department and our Spanish language residents. Their coverage has led directly to increased fire prevention education and connecting students to the Blaze Mentoring Program. They cover not just active incidents, but also any special events that we have. Certificate of Appreciation, Justin Bradford. Justin Bradford is a local sports media personality that has been extremely supportive of the Nashville Fire Department hockey team and their charity games and tournaments. Justin has advertised through his on-air shows, his social media accounts, about the different charity games and local events the team is involved with. Because of his actions, the team has been able to raise several thousands, dollar, thousands of dollars to give to local charities. Justin has reflected a positive image within the Nashville Fire Department. Organization Appreciation, HCA. The Nashville Fire Department was invited to speak at HCA's Lunch and Learn on October 22nd, 2021, where information regarding the support that Box 55 offers to first responders was highlighted. HCA added Box 55 to their Caring for the Community program, where HCA employees could contribute items to Box 55. In appreciation of HCA's efforts to support members of the Nashville Fire Department through Box 55, an organizational appreciation of award is being given. Organization Appreciation, Predators Foundation. The Nashville Predators Foundation is a 501c3 charity organization de devoted to funneling the excitement of professional sports toward the needs of our community. Since its establishment, the Nashville Predators Foundation has made a significant impact in the Middle Tennessee community. <clears throat> The Predators Foundation has been a vital partner to the efforts of the Nashville Fire Department hockey team, Box 55, and the Blaze Mentoring Program. Through the support of the Predators Foundation, the Blaze Mentoring Program was able to award five additional $1,000 scholarships to MMPS students this May, totaling $8,000 in scholarships. The Predators Foundation also treated those students and their families to a Nashville Predators hockey game and acknowledged them at the game. Chiefs Award, Department of Emergency Communications, Angie Milliken and John Reynolds. Angie Milliken and John Reynolds from Department of Emergency Communications supported the Nashville Fire Department from their department in countless ways. They have assisted the Nashville Fire Department with administrative and operational requests, including changes to response configurations, building new unit territories, building response apparatus, med carts and fire carts into CAD, <coughs> and many other changes we have incorporated as a department. These individuals have always been willing to support departmental requests. Chiefs Award, Music City Center, Charles Starks, CEO. The Music City Center and CEO Charles, Star Charles Starks is an ardent supporter of the National Fire Department and the National Office of Emergency Management. MCC is hosting us here today, but also when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Nashville MCC was prepared to become a temporary hospital if needed. The center also hosted vaccination events to help our community have quick and easy access to the COVID-19 vaccines as soon as we could distribute them. For their continued support of the Nashville Fire Department and OEM, we present CEO Charles Stark with this special chief.
Chiefs Award. Chiefs Award, 9-11 Ceremony Event Production. Skirmerhorn Symphony Center, Alan Valentine, CEO. Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, Butch Spirit and CEO. Tennessee Army National Guard, Lieutenant Colonel John Rigdon. Uh, MNPD Chief, uh, John Drake. THP from Brad Lund. The IATSE Local 46 Stagehands, Patrick Hutcherson, Dustin Cunningham, Kevin Ward, Christopher Winters. The Local 140 Honor Guard, Doug Pinkerton. IAFF Local 140, former President Mark Young, NDOT, Diana Arcon. The 9-11 ceremony took not just leadership from our personnel previously mentioned, it took a collaborative effort from all of these people. Imagine trying to organize a big event and needing everything to line up on time, in place, and without a budget. That fantasy was reality because of the dedicated work of all of our partners in this event's production. We must mention that all of these partners work with the department in a variety of operational capacities. The collaborative spirit and these strong relationships are not easily created, but they are highly appreciated. Thank you to all those who are here and represent countless others from your organizations who made the 20th annual 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony a success. For your work, the Nashville Fire Department honors you with these Chiefs Awards. Nine Eleven Ceremony Chiefs Award, District Chief Timothy Holmes, Captain Mark Young, Captain Doug Pinkerton, and Engineer Jonathan Puckett. 2021 marked the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our country. The Nashville Fire Department and local IAFF 140 have an annual remembrance ceremony at the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center at the Fallen Firefighters Memorial on the Symphony Center property. This is a special place for several reasons. One, because it honors all firefighters who have passed away locally and nationally. This is also the former home to Station 9, also known as the Bottoms. For the 20th anniversary, the goal was to create a larger event, one that honored the legacy of everyone lost on 9-11 and to also pay honor to the personnel who passed away. This group of people came together to create a memorial walk from the heart of the Christmas Day tragedy to the Symphony Center where a full <coughs> stage, joint honor guard with MNPD and military flyover participated in the event. It was by far one of the most impressive and respectful remembrance ceremonies in the nation. But it took more than a year from idea to execution, from permits to shuttles for guests to audio, video, logistics, runs of show, and much more, this event was a huge undertaking. But for the commitment of the personnel members to do the work on their own time, this could not have happened. For that, we honor them with a Chief's Award. Chief's Unit Award is to be awarded to a unit which shows superior team effort and achievement contributing greatly to the safety, appearance, supervision, administration, management, proficiency, or public relations of the Nashville Fire Department. 9-11 Ceremony, Special Operations, Commander Larry Clymer, Captain Mike Armstead, and NFD PIOs, Kendra Loney and Joseph Pleasant. For every event and every action at the Nashville Fire Department, there are people at, there are the public and even personnel that they didn't know was involved. It is like the iceberg that peaks out from the ocean yet extends far below the surface. The 20th anniversary of 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony required a lot of work and fine details that were not thought of all the time until they were needed. This group worked to efficiently get everything done and on the day of the event, make sure that the program stayed on track. For this work, the National Fire Department presents them the Chief Unit Award.
Chief's Award. This is awarded to an individual who shows superior effort and achievement, which contributes greatly to the safety, apparent supervision, administration, management, proficiency, or public relations of the fire department. Our safety, District Chief Jerry Moreland. District Chief Jerry Moreland oversees the safety division of the Nashville Fire Department. Chief Moreland has gone above and beyond throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. He has taken calls at all hours from our personnel and guided them through not just the initial pandemic, but also the Delta variant, Omicron variant, booster vaccinations, and testing. He takes calls during holidays, weekends, and evenings, and is a constant that many of our personnel depend on. Chief Moreland provides consistent advice and guidance while reassuring our members during times of illness. Facility Maintenance, Daryl Pulley. This year, we are honoring facility maintenance for their unwavering dedication to ensuring that the day-to-day -day mechanical operations of the Nashville Fire Department are running smoothly and safely. This would not be possible without Daryl Pulley's leadership and the get the job done philosophy that his crew embodies. There have been several times facility maintenance has gone the extra mile to ensure facility needs were fulfilled. The Nashville Fire Department would like to present the Chief Unit Award to Daryl Pulley and the entire crew at facility Unit citation, to be awarded to any unit, company, or squad of the National Fire Department who performs an act of heroism as a group that reflects the outstanding proficiency of the unit as a whole and the advantages of teamwork. As Sean Housefire, Engineer Ricky Woodruff, Firefighter Christopher Hughes, Firefighter Christopher Pokraki. On February 14, 2021, Valentine's Day, DEC dispatcher sent Nashville Fire Department personnel to a house fire at 221 Ashwan Boulevard. Engine 36 arrived first. Acting in charge, firefighter Christopher Hughes reported heavy smoke coming from the rear of a residence. Hughes passed command and pulled an attack line with firefighter Christopher Procracki. Hughes and Procracki advanced the attack line around the Bravo side of the residence to the back of the home where they were met on the back deck by a man who said his wife was still inside the house. Upon hearing this, Hughes radioed that there was a person trapped inside the house. Hughes and Procracki immediately made their way into the home knowing only a general location of the wife's residence. Under heavy smoke condition, they entered the home with literally no visibility and were crawling on the floor. They began yelling for the wife and they along with each other were feeling around for the missing woman inside the home. Procracki heard the wife moaning and he and Hughes were able to locate her and bring her to safety outside the residence. There was also a pet dog at the woman's side when they found her and the dog followed them out of the home as they rescued the woman. Pokraki, by the way, had just recently graduated from the fire academy at the time of this incident. They went above and beyond their duties. Engineer Woodruff continued his duties getting water supply established for the other arriving companies and could immediately, so that they could immediately begin performing their duties. Rope Rescue, Captain Brian Reichard, Captain William Merrill, Engineer Michael Boatman, Engineer Joshua Moore, Firefighter, uh, Engineer Daryl Perry, Firefighter James Norman, Firefighter James Guest, Firefighter Charles Chapman. On November 30th, 2021, around 9 p.m., Engine 13 and Rescue 13 responded to a mutual aid call from Cheatham County at Mal Marker 191 on I-40 West on a high angle rescue. A person had fled the scene of an earlier motor vehicle accident. The man ran into a wooded area next to the interstate and then fell down a river bluff, landing on an ed ledge overlooking the South Harper River. Whether the man was injured or how severe his injuries were was not known. The patient had fallen approximately 40 to 50 feet and was about the same distance from the river below. Several positions had to be rigged and scouted to locate the safest route to access and retrieve the patient. 
Once personnel located a safe access point, they had to clear brush to allow for rigging and safe rope operations. All of this was happening at the dark of night. The crews were able to successfully rescue the patient and transfer him to Cheatham County EMS. The crews of Engine 13 and Rescue 13 performed remarkably under adverse conditions, including a rural location of operations and the confines of darkness, while performing a difficult high angle rope rescue in aid of Cheatham County. As credit of their skill, knowledge, and professionalism, the members of Task Force 13 humbly and proficiently brought honor to themselves and the National Fire Department. CPR, Firefighter Benjamin Rager, Firefighter Lauren Redding, Firefighter Matthew Fox, Paramedic Stu Schmidt, and AEMT Jennifer, Jennifer Plischkat. Truck 25, under the command of acting in charge, Firefighter ben Benjamin Rager, responded to a cardiac arrest. They arrived to find an adult male, apneic, and in cardiac arrest in the driveway of the address. Our personnel immediately went to work performing high quality CPR while another crew member attached the AED. A shock was advised and delivered. CPR was continued. Medic three arrived on scene. The patient was re removed from the driveway and assisted to Medic three. Firefighters Rager and Fox rode with Medic Smith and Pleskit and continued to offer assistance on the ride to Skyline Hospital. The patient was awake and responsive upon arrival to Skyline and gave the crew a thumbs up. The, truck of truck, the crew of Truck 25 and Medic 3 used their training and skills to the highest level to save the patient's life. Dear EMS staff and first responders, thank you for your excellent care that you gave to my husband, Kevin, on 11-4-21. Kevin suffered cardiac arrest, and then my son gave CPR until you arrived. Your expert and excellent care given to Kevin saved his life. He is fully recovering from cardiac arrest, CAD with stent, cardiogenic shock, and acute renal failure. He had an ICD placed on 11-9 and recovered and discharged on 11-10. Kevin did not want to miss our son's wedding. The bride and groom came to the hospital pre-wedding and the wedding was live streamed to him in the hospital. You made this New Jersey couple so happy and we are praising God for giving <coughs> Kevin life. May God bless the works of your hands. That was a letter received from his wife. Airway obstruction, firefighter uh, Alan Parker, firefighter Malcolm Bonner, engineer Brett Ashton, AEMT Matthew Robeson. On 427-21, engine 21 and medic five responded to Logan's restaurant for possible airway obstruction. A 69-year-old female patient was in cardiac arrest and resuscitated prior to arrival by bystanders. When engine 21 arrived, the patient was conscious but unable to speak. Shortly after Engine 21's arrival, the patient became unresponsive again and CPR was initiated by fire department personnel. The patient was pulseless and apneic and in PEA when paramedic Justin Hampton assessed the patient. He immediately inserted a scope blade and medill forceps into the patient's airway and removed a large piece of food blocking the airway. The patient began breathing after the food was removed and slowly began to regain consciousness during the transport to the hospital. The patient made a full recovery without neurological de deficit and was released from the hospital shortly after arrival. The quick thinking and collaborative effort of all personnel on scene contributed to the patient's recovery. Exemplary performance. Exemplary performance is to be awarded to any member of the National Fire Department who demonstrates superior performance in the line of duty that exemplifies the emergency mission of the fire department. For the same airway obstruction, paramedic Justin Hampton. For his actions on this call, the paramedic is being awarded an exemplary performance commendation. Cumberland River, Firefighter Lenny Manning, Paramedic Sean Tolan, Paramedic Adrian Fisher, AEMT Sarah Cameron, Anissa, uh, AEMT Anissa Miles. The night of August 28, 2021, the fire cart and med carts were staged at First and Broadway. When people were alerted, alerted our personnel that two pedestrians fell into the Cumberland River. 
When the medics arrived, they found engineer Lenny Manning, paramedic Sean Tolan, AEMT Anissa Miles, and paramedic Adrian Fisher, who had already deployed a throw bag and the first person was being pulled to shore. Firefighter Calvin and AMT Cameron were down at the far end of the dock. They had gotten, firefighter Calvin had gotten into the water and got a female patient out in hand and Cameron was retrieving them with a throw bag. The speed in which these ladies and gentlemen performed their simultaneous rescues is to be commended. All victims were removed from the water within minutes. Firefighter Calvin's female victim could not swim and the current was so strong that night that the water was well over their heads. All of these people upheld the mission statement of the National Fire Department and selflessly acted without hesitation and saved two lives. For his part, firefighter Cody Calvin is receiving exemplary performance. MVA versus pedestrian. Captain Brian Moss, Engineer Dale McWright, Engineer Eric Sample, Firefighter Paramedic Donald Young, Firefighter David Scott, Firefighter Chris Survey, Paramedic Gerald Jones, AEMT Ian Donegan. On December 6th, Engine 37, Truck 37, and Medic 37 responded to a motor vehicle collision versus pedestrian to find a very difficult call the victim's lower leg was severely broken and tangled between the wheel well and the tire of a vehicle that had rolled over on her. The engine, the truck, and the medic unit worked quickly and decisively to medicate, free, and stabilize the patient without incident and with minimal damage to an already terrible situation for that patient. Rio Vista Fire, May 12, 2021. Engineer Thomas Claiborne, Engineer David Martin, Engineer Kobe Rainey, Firefighter Chris Heflin, Firefighter John Rowden. On May 12, 2021, National Fire Department personnel responded to a two alarm fire at Rio Vista. When personnel arrived, they found a large volume of fire from the second floor apartment and a mother dropping her kids to residents on the ground floor. There was also a woman who was unresponsive in a black SUV in front of the building. Engine 28 personnel advanced the line for fire attack against the large volume of fire. Engineer Thomas Claiborne assisted Chief Jordan with extending a ladder off the engine to the window where the mother was trying to save her children. Engineer Claiborne managed to charge a hose line and try to secure a water supply for crews while also trying to render aid to the woman in the black SUV who was unresponsive. Firefighters Heflin and Rowden found Chief Jordan at the base of the ladder on the Alpha side. Smoke had already banked down to the ground where the firefighters were donning PPE and scaled the ladder and they were removing the family from the apartment and searching the apartment to aid the firefighters in firefighting duties. This was after they had secured the water supply needed to effectively attack the fire. Engineers Martin and Rainey had the forethought to enter the complex from the opposite side. They secured a second water supply from the neighboring street. With other fire crews committed to other responsibilities, Engineer Rainey sprinted 100 yards or more to a hydrant on a neighboring street, assisted Engine 18 in securing that hydrant, and then sprinted 100 yards back to help with water supply. Truck 25 then secured a second water supply, which was crucial in suppressing this apartment fire. Fire Doverside Drive, Captain David Tomlinson, Captain Chris Claiborne, Engineer Josh Payne, Firefighter Colby Gordon, Firefighter John Perry, Firefighter Tanner Hale, Paramedic John Ceramento, Paramedic Chris Visnoski, AEMT Zachary Evans. On December 13, 2021, just after 1 a.m., Station 1 responded to a house fire at 3336 Doverside Drive. 
Engine one and rescue one arrived to find heavy smoke and flames coming from the windows. Quick efforts and knowledge by acting in charge engineer Kobe Gordon and engineer Josh Payne established a water supply. At this time, a neighbor told personnel there was a person possibly inside. Firefighter Tanner Hill breached the door to the house. Hill and Perry advanced the line to the fire, keeping the fire and flames off of Rescue One so they could search for a victim. Within seconds, Rescue One, within seconds of Rescue One doing a search, Captain Claiborne found a victim and dragged him from the house and started CPR. Acting District One Chief Vis Chris Viksnowski started CPR and rescue breathing while Captain Claiborne uh, with Captain Claiborne until Medic 29 arrived. MEC-29 paramedic John Sarmento and AEMT Zachary Evans acted quickly on patient care and transported the patient to Vanderbilt. Acting District 29 Chief David Tomlinson controlled the scene well and had resources on the scene quickly. Vanderbilt notified QI that the victim did indeed survive. Sixteen-year-old stroke, paramedic Logan Steinbarge, AEMT Haley Harris. On March 18, 2021, Medic 37 arrived and paramedic Logan Steinbarge and AEMT Haley Harris recognized that a 16-year-old patient signs and symptoms were possibly a stroke. Medic Steinbarge and Harris aggressively treated the patient for a possible stroke and called in a stroke alert to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. The patient was found to be having an ischemic stroke and successfully underwent a thrombectomy to remove the clot with full neurological recovery after the surgery. The quick decisions and actions of all personnel on the scene resulted in a successful recovery of the 16-year-old patient. Distinguished service to be awarded to any member of the National Fire Department who while on or off duty performs an act, renders aid, assists others, or alters events or circumstances in such a fashion that brings deserved recognition to this individual. Homeless Outreach Paramedic Michael Varley, AEMT Mary Lehman. Medic 28 responded out to Stewart's Ferry Road and I-40 multiple times, but the next couple of times would truly be devastating. On April 21st, or excuse me, April 2nd, 2021, it was noted that Medic 28's crew, paramedic Mike Varley and AEMT Mary Lehman, had been on the side of the road for an unusual amount of time. Their supervisor responded to their location to check on them. They were in the woods beside the road attempting to care for a homeless man. Paramedic Varley and AEMT Lehman had transported this patient earlier in the day and they discovered that he did not have access to warm clothing or shoes. They purchased warm clothing and shoes for this individual, knowing that the temperatures for the night were going to be around 31 degrees. Unfortunately, that same evening while trying to locate the patient to deliver the warm clothing and shoes, they were a little too late and found him to be hypothermic and not answering questions appropriately. They transported the man to the hospital, and once at the hospital, the patient was treated appropriately, and the clothing that the crew had purchased was left with the patient for when he could be discharged. About a month later, while reading a Facebook page called Hip Donaldson, they read that the male patient they had treated previously was missing. Once again, this crew went to check on the man in the area where they had found him before. Unfortunately, while looking for this patient, they found his remains with the boots and the socks that they had purchased for him. Even though this was not the outcome that anyone had sought, it was able to bring closure to this patient's family. The Bronze Star, to be awarded to any member of the National Fire Department who displays proficiency and courage in an emergency related duty that requires substantial action or intervention. Highway shooting, paramedic Alex Martin, AEMT Shelby Lore. On Monday, December 6, 2021, AEMT Shelby Lawler and paramedic Alex Martin witnessed a two car motor vehicle collision. AEMT Lawler kept the medic unit under control to avoid being involved in the accident. Lawler then placed the vehicle in a safe position for medics to assess the incident. Lawler got out and began assessing patients on the scene. The first car had a fire underneath the hood. 
The driver of that vehicle was able to get out. However, the driver's daughter was in the vehicle and was unresponsive. Paramedic Martin got the patient from the car. As our medics were beginning to secure the patient to the stretcher, they first heard a responding officer speaking to someone in the other car, and then they saw the police officer shoot the driver of that second car. Larler obtained tourniquets and trauma dressings to assist controlling the bleeding of the wounded person. Lawler then made sure that both victims were sheltered from the gunfire before her own safety even. Martin heroically got one patient to safely and quickly started assessing the other patient. Martin placed his safety last while helping others on this scene. The Silver Star to be awarded to any member of the National Fire Department who at extreme personal risk performs any outstanding act of marked distinction that requires intervention while off duty. Hazmat, Chief Thomas Pomeroy, Captain James Orman, Captain John Newland, Engineer Philip Wade, Engineer Austin Roberts, Engineer Caleb Trollinger. It is not uncommon for our personnel to overcome and adapt to challenging environments. However, there are times when our personnel exhibit a new level of courage and determination to save a life. A mutual aid request was initiated by Cheatham County responders when a tractor trailer truck hauling a dangerous substance was involved in an accident on I-40. The container was leaking a highly explosive and flammable product and the driver was structurally pinned inside of the truck. When National Fire Department's members arrived on scene, they were met with several challenges to save the life of the driver in a dangerous environment. But the decision was made that our entry team would wear full turnout gear and operate on air using SCBAs to extricate the injured driver and establish an evacuation corridor. In the summer heat and coupled with additional weight, six of our personnel donned full gear and successfully freed that driver from the vehicle and moved him to a safe area for transport to the hospital. And we'll give one more round of applause to all of our honorees today. Thank you. And while we're here, we also want to acknowledge our OEM Emergency Support Unit uh, members. If you're here, please stand and congratulate them on making it as a finalist for the Mary Catherine Strobel Volunteer Awards of Middle Tennessee uh, that celebrate volunteerism. Many people don't know this, but our ESUs do all that work for free, and it's a very highly skilled, specialized uh, job they do from our canine rescues to our uh, safety divers. All of that done for free on their own time. So once again, we thank all of our OEM personnel and especially our ESUs. And we want to thank Mayor John Cooper for being with us today. The mayor has another engagement, but we appreciate his time as always and uh, thank him for being with us. The Nashville Fire Department is a family. The brotherhood and sisterhood that we share is unlike anything found in any other profession. Our service to the community is a true calling, and this calling to serve others is what binds us together. I hope that everyone here today never takes this for granted. Regardless of our rank or position within the NFD, we work together as a team. We rely on each other, sometimes in extremely dangerous and challenging moments. We laugh together, and unfortunately, sometimes we cry together. It is extremely difficult for any department in public service to lose a member, but it is especially difficult when they lose a member in the line of duty. Losing a fellow responder creates a void that echoes and resonates in different ways throughout a department. 
Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., the Nashville Fire Department Operations Division C shift, their personnel will report to duty. As their shift begins, Station 39 and Station 13 will have a chair that sits empty. Our department has recently faced two in line of duty losses. The department tragically lost engineer Malcolm Arrington on September 1st, 2021. And then we lost Captain Mike Brooks on February 1st of 2022. Two good men, admired, respected, and loved, and taken from us too soon. Chief Swan and the Commendation Committee felt it important that we remember and recognize the families of Malcolm Arrington and Mike Brooks this morning. We would now ask that the Arrington and Brooks families please come up front. to the families. Chief Swan and the members of the Nashville Fire Department would like to present you with an item that we hope serves as a reminder that the Arrington and Brooks families will always be a part of the Nashville Fire Department. And we would like to share with you how we will always remember Brother Malcolm Arrington and Brother Mike Brooks in our hearts and in our memories. We will now have our chaplain and Deschelles come and lead us in our benediction. Family, if you'll stand. Almighty Father, it's evident that your hand of protection is upon us. As we leave here today, be above us to protect us, be beneath us to uphold us, go before us to direct us, be behind us to keep us from straying, and continue to be all around us as you defend us. Every thankful praise as we all say together as a family, amen. 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 But before you go, there's a surprise that Kendra doesn't know about that's even on the program. So Chief Thomason has a presentation for Kendra as well as for Angie Goins for their work to make this all possible. of their efforts. Uh, the commendation committee members are made up of members of the National Fire Department. They donate their time and they donate their services to review these and to, and to put this commendation ceremony together. But behind the scenes work is often unnoticed and we thank you all for what you do to help us. And with that, we are complete. However, we do have parking validation and refreshments. So uh, if you wanted your parking validated, just come up to the stage, we'll take care of that for you. And then there'll be refreshments outside.
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.